You want to play Tokyo Ghoul? Wait, is it called Tokyo Ghoul? No, Ghostwire Tokyo. Tokyo Ghoul's an anime, isn't it? Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting the video in one take, guys. Deal with it. The point is, you're going to need a really good graphics card. Or you're just gonna get really bad performance. And I mean for like everybody, high-end graphics cards, low-end graphics cards, you wanna crank the settings, you're gonna need a heck of a GPU. You wanna just barely play the game? Well, you might need a better GPU than you think. Here's the system requirements. Okay, there's actually two versions of the system requirements. This chart gives us a lot of information but I found even more information at Bethesda.net where they have another system requirements list. Now these, for the most part, match up, but I noticed at this one, when they're talking about resolutions, they say up to, but then they also, on this one, don't give a frame rate target. Whereas on this one, they actually give a frame rate target of 30 FPS, by the way. All, they're all 30 FPS, although some of them say VFR, which I'm just gonna assume stands for variable frame rate, which probably means that you could lock to 30 FPS, like those are your minimums if you want to, but the game is capable of taking advantage to higher of higher frame rates in some scenes. So if you had a variable refresh rate monitor, you might not want to just lock it at 30. I'm gonna assume that's what VFR stands for here. But again, on these ones, they don't say up to this resolution. On these ones, they do say up to this resolution. So that could be because the game has a, uh, it's using the Unreal Engine is my understanding. And it, I believe it has a temporal upscaling solution in this game. And so maybe there's a dynamic resolution scaler and hopefully works pretty good. I'll definitely be testing this out. By the way, I will be benchmarking my 1060 and checking if they're correct that it gets up to, wait, 1280p, that's a typo. What they mean is 1280 by 720, which we would normally call 720p. Wait, is a GTX 1060 only gonna get 30 FPS at 720p at low settings in this game? Because if that's true, that is the worst performance I will have ever seen in any game on my GTX 1060. That's absolutely nuts. And they are specifying this is the six gigabyte version. They're not even saying that the three gigabyte version can run the game. I'm curious if it can, although I only have the 1060 to test. I'll definitely be benchmarking this game on all of my GPUs because I am fascinated by these performance requirements. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel. March 25th game comes out. I'll start posting videos. We'll start with the 1060. I'm so curious about that. Anyway, other specs we'll run through real quick. They want 20 gigabytes of hard drive space, although I should say SSD space. They recommend an SSD even for the absolute minimums. Although, you know, there they just say recommended, which means you could install the game on an HDD, but they're not recommending it. That's maybe why they're getting away with only 20 gigabytes of storage space. Maybe by uh, utilizing the SSD, they're able to stream things better and, and I don't know. Anyway, I don't wanna get bogged down in that. Not a lot of storage space required, but they do want an SSD. DX12, memory is 12 gigabytes even at the, at the minimum. We're talking system RAM here, not VRAM. And then quickly jumping up to 16 gigabytes RAM for the actual recommended settings. Now, the CPUs don't seem too crazy here. The bottom end are the 4770K and the Ryzen 5 1600. The 4770K came out in 2013, I looked it up, and is a, a four core, eight thread chip. The Ryzen 5 1600 is a lot newer, but it, and is six core, 12 thread came out in 2017, but keep in mind that at, on these earlier AMD CPUs, they generally had worse gaming performance because their single each single thread wasn't quite as good as the uh, Intel thread. So while this one's older, it wouldn't surprise me if their gaming performance was at least somewhat comparable. Although don't quote me on that, I didn't pull up a specific review. Now they quickly jump up uh, by increasing the Ryzen 5s up to the 2600, then the 3600, then the 5600. And these are all six core 12 thread, although the individual threads get more powerful as you go. And then jumping the i7 up to an i7 6700 and then an 8700, and they leave the 8700 kind of flat across the board. By the way, CPU requirements, keep in mind that ray tracing usually does increase the CPU overhead a little bit here. Now the i7-8700 is six core 12 thread now as well. 
Um, and this is a much newer chip coming out in 2018, but still not saying like you need the absolute latest and greatest from the CPU side of things. Let's go ahead and jump back into the GPUs on this thing, because man, if you wanna play the game at 30 FPS, although they do say variable frame rate is how I'm taking that, so it's probably better than 30 in a lot of scenes, but definitely dropping to 30. 1080p high settings, you're gonna need a GTX 1080 or an RX 5600 XT. So let's actually pull up a relative performance chart here and already start getting some of the, uh, some of the performance uh, kind of mapped out if you have some other GPUs. So if you have the 1060, we're saying the game is barely playable at 30 FPS below 1080p at the low settings. And then they're putting that 5500 XT up against it right here, right? So those are kind of classed in a similar place. And that does make sense according to this relative performance chart, which I've pulled up from Tech Power Up. Now, they're saying that if you want to jump up to 1080p at the high settings, but still only at 30 FPS, but with a variable frame rate, they're saying you want to jump up to a GTX 1080 or a 5600 XT, which are once again in the same performance ballpark. And it is a 50 to 60% performance jump over our GTX 1066 gigabyte. So that is a big jump just to get you to 1080p high settings. And again, not even guaranteeing you better than 30 FPS. Wow, let's see where we jump up next. So if you wanna play this at 1440p, 30 FPS, they're saying a 2070 Super or a 5700. 2070 Super or a 5700. So that's jumping up quite a bit again. 2070 Super is now doubling our minimum performance. Um, the 5700 is around here as well. Did they not put it on this chart? It might not be on this chart. Oh, no, there it is. 5700 XT is also kind of in that ballpark. Uh, inter now, by scrolling through here, you're hopefully taking a look to see if you find your GPU anywhere on this list. Although some of you guys might be like, mine was way below the minimum. Well, too bad, guys. <laughs> this looks like it's going to be a rough one. If we go scroll up from the 1080 to the 2070 Super, that's like a 30% performance jump. And that does kind of make sense. We're jumping from high to very high. And once again, uh, from 1080p to 1440p. So kind of makes sense. And then we're jumping up to play at the at 4K 30 FPS variable frame rate. At the highest settings, they're going to recommend a 2080 Super, a 3070, or an RX 6800 non-XT. So that is 4K 30 for those specs. Now, so if we want to jump up from like the GTX 1080, to the 3070, that's a big 74% jump, but that makes sense if we're turning up settings and playing at 4K. So maybe you can find your specs somewhere here in between. They've got that RX 6800, uh, 6800 in there. Now, if you're wondering, was that targeting DLSS? Well, uh, that is something that I actually checked on this chart because these ones are saying the up to this resolution for this, and they don't say anything about FSR or DLSS, but when you go over to their ray tracing settings on this version of the chart, they do say whether DLSS or FSR is enabled. And these do say disabled. So I think that they would have told us if they were planning, uh, if they were re recommending this based on FSR or DLSS, although that up to resolution um, is a little bit questionable if that has any kind of dynamic resolution scaling going on. Now, if you want to play this game with ray tracing, I mean, good luck. <laughs> Looks like you could use an RTX 2060 or a 6700 XT to get 30 FPS at 1080p at the low ray tracing settings. And once again, if I pull up the other list, this is where we're seeing that this is not relying on DLSS. So if you're willing to use DLSS or FSR, you could probably get some better performance there. Now, 
Going up to the RT recommended settings, we're seeing the RTX 3070 and the RX 6800. And this is for 1440p 30 FPS. And let's go ahead and pull up the other list. It looks like this one is also not relying on DLSS or FSR here. And I think that's really good news because I think usually for 1440p ray tracing uh, with pretty high ray tracing settings, you would be using DLSS or FSR to help get you there. By the way, with the FSR in this game, I'm really curious how the temporal upscaling works in this game because uh, that'll be something I'll test out on my AMD GPUs, is whether it would be better to use FSR in this game or the temporal upscaler built into the, um, into the game. Now, if you want to play this game absolutely maxed out at 4K, 30 FPS with variable frame rate, you'd need an RTX 3080 or RX 6900 XT. And if we are looking at with 4K, here they're specifying that DLSS quality is required and FSR all the way to balanced, which is very aggressive, um, especially with FSR where the more aggressive settings do lose you a lot of image quality. That's why I'm also curious um, how that temporal upscaler works in this game. Overall, I've got to say this looks pretty brutal and I'm going to have some fun benchmarking it, especially getting into ray tracing and using that temporal upscaler versus the, uh, the FSR implementation. And oh man, my poor 1060, let's see what happens. Are you guys interested in this game? Let me know in the comment section and I hope that you have an excellent day.